Hello fellow problem solvers. So they're going to be doing a geometric lemma series. We're we'll starting with the geometric lemma one. I suggest you try this lovely little simple geometric problem out for a minimum of 10 minutes, ideally half an hour, not more than an hour and a half. If you like to go along, let's just give it a go for the next five minutes. And here's the thing about this problem. It's a good introductory problem to geometry. If you want to work on angle chasing, you want to work on like thinking, you know, building your, building your geometry skills from the ground up. This is what this sort of like geometric lemma is about. So sort of like help you out with thinking. So let OH be the circumcenter and the ortho center of ABC. Let M be the midpoint of BC. Prove that two times OM is equal to AH. So how are we going to calculate? How are we going to do this? What are we going to do? There's one approach, which is trigonometry. I'm assuming you don't know that. Like, and really, if you're just starting out with geometry and you want to do competitive mathematics, don't learn geometry. Don't learn, don't learn trigonometry. Try to get comfortable with adding points, get, building up an intuition, sort of understanding how to apply lemmas with, and add synthetic points. Synthetically meaning using similarity, congruency, angle chasing, and concyclic points. So what do we do here? Well, you see, I haven't, I only drawn M here, which is the midpoint of BC. I haven't drawn H or O, and here's why. A big part of thinking about how you're going to solve a problem is actually constructing, in geometry, is constructing the points. So if you think about H, for H, I need to have two heights, right? Now you have a height here, and let's say a height here. And then the intersection gives me H, okay? Now, what do I need for O? Well, I have this one angle bisector, and I'm doing like sort of like opposite A, I'll do opposite C as well. Let this be N, call this D and E, okay? So now what is O? Well, O is when we have a 90 degree angle here and a 90 degree angle here. And then we get O. Now, what is important here in geometry? Well, the important part is that if OM, two times OM, is equal to AH, by sheer symmetry, we need to have two times ON to be equaling to CH. And with that, I invite you to pause for the next five to ten minutes and see if there, if there is anything here that you can that's maybe prompting you to look at something. Like think of it back, think of the geometry problem backwards. If this was the case, so if this was half of this, and this was half of this, what would that mean? Take five, 10 minutes and do it now, because here's the next step. So the next step is, so we would have, this is half of this, this is half of this, this is half of this. And now, we know also by angle chasing, by whatever, um, OM, hmm, let me think how I can actually motivate this. Well, OM is parallel to AH and O is parallel to CH, which means that these two angles are identical. The angle NOM and AHC are equal. I mean, you can also angle chase and get that if this is beta, this is 180 minus beta, and because this is both 90, you can also get this as 180 minus beta. There's many ways to get, get the same thing. But what would we have? We would have that NOM, this is 180 minus beta, this is equal to this, this is half of this, this is half of, I mean, this is twice as this, and this is twice as this. We would have side angle side similarity, right? We would have these sides are of the same proportion. And we have the angle between them, which gives us side angle side similarity. So now that's backwards thinking. What would we get? So let's do forwards thinking. How do we get to this similarity? Well, do we have anything that, well, what we have, we'd have AHC and MON. Well, MN, what do we know about MN? Well, because this is the midpoint here, and this is the midpoint here, we know that Again, by, there's, there are many ways we can go about this. Um, 
I'll pretend you don't know this fact. So the idea is this is half of this. This is half of this. They, have the sh they share the same angle, which means that N, B, M, and A, B, C are similar, right? So this over this is this over this, and we have this angle is equal to this angle. Ergo, we have similarity, which means that MN is half of AC, and it's also parallel to AC. So now we get that this angle right here is alpha due to this similarity, and this is gamma. And now what does that give us? Well, we have this angle right here, because this whole thing is 9. This is 90, and then this is 90 minus gamma. And then this angle right here is 90 minus alpha. So now we have all the angles inside NOM. We have this is half of this. And now can we get all the angles inside of AHC? Well, yes, this is 90 minus gamma, 90 minus alpha, because this is 90, gamma, and then 90 and alpha. That's how we get this one. So now with that, we have this, these two triangles are similar. So let's see, triangle AHC is similar to triangle. So A, I have 90 minus gamma. Where do I have 90 minus gamma? I have it at M, M, H, M, O, my bad, M, O, N. And now this implies that A, H over M, O is H, C over O, N is equal to AC over MN. However, we know that AC over MN is equal to what? 2, 1. This is equal to 2. And so we have that AH is equal to 2 times MO, which is what we needed to prove. I think this is a cool sort of geometry problem. Take 10 minutes, figure out what, what it is we've done. Write out the complete proof yourself and sort of see if you can like figure out the logic here that we followed. So first and foremost, this problem, if true, think of it backwards. If this is true, then it also must be true. Like this is symmetrical. Like, you're using facts about symmetry. There's nothing special about A as opposed to B and C, right? So you need to, so that means that I should have the same thing for C and the same thing for B because H and O are symmetric with respect to A, B, C. Like there's nothing special about A. Like in this problem, there's nothing special about A. We just happen to choose this midpoint. So that's how you can infer backwards more information, think about symmetry. And then you say, okay, what would I have? I would have this is equal to this. okay. Then you see, oh, then you do some angle tracing. You start going forwards. Okay, let me do some angle tracing. Oh, I have this angle is equal to this angle. Now go backwards. I have this angle is equal to this angle. If I have this as well, oh, that means I have similarity. Now, go backwards, look for similarity. Okay, can I calculate all the angles? I can. I have they're similar. I need the coefficient. How do I get the coefficient? So what, would I, what do I need here? I have a coefficient of two or half, depending how you look at it. Okay, how do I get the coefficient of two? And then you see, okay, MN. Okay, well, if I don't have this directly nor this directly, let me see if I can get MN over AC. Oh, wait a second. I need, so I need MN over AC to be a half. Actually, no, MN over AC, yeah, to be a half. So then you go, okay, I need this. That's backwards, now forwards. Okay, so I need, if this is going to be half of this, this is half of this, this is half, so I'll have a similarity here. And then, okay, so I need a similarity here, then you're back here, and you see, okay, I have this over this, I have the shared angle, side angle, side, bam, we're done. But it's a game of backwards and forwards until you reach a point where they meet, and then you solve the problem. So I think this is just a cool sort of illustration of that sort of game on an introductory sort of level. And this solves our problem, and as always, thanks for problem solving.